video let us look at the question number 30 to 40 and question number 30 says the half adder is used for the addition of so this half adder is used for the addition of two bits of information generally we have uh, different kinds of error adders we have half adder we have something called as full adder then we have look ahead carry adder look ahead carry adder or ripple carry adder ripple carry adder or we can say serial adders right so this half adder is used to add two bits of information full adder used to add three bits of information look ahead carry adder is a combination which can be created using half adder or full adder but that this the job of the look ahead carry adder is to add some combination of bits right in the same way in uh, in serial adder again we are going to add some combinations of bit so here they are just asking about the half adder so this is going to add two bits of information so question number 31 says which are the evaluation criteria of a storage unit now there are different evaluation criteria here number one is the access time obviously this is the correct evaluation criteria for example we have storage unit like there's a cache memory there's a main memory there's a secondary storage now in secondary storage we can have ssd we can have hard disk or we can have cd dvd ex drives etc etc so this we have this kind of hierarchy because of their access speed so access speed storage capacity and cost per bit all these are the evaluation criteria so you can say all of the above are the evaluation criteria for the storage unit if you see this cache memory and uh, again if here we have cpu then after cpu we have registers then we have cache memory main memory and so on now this cache memory is very small and registers are even smaller than cache memory so here the cost per bit here when we have cache memory registers and main memory the cost per bit is very high right and if you go to this direction the, because the size of the media is great i mean big and the cost per bit is low you can see the size is big and the cost is low that is why cost per bit is low so again we can evaluate the different storage unit accordingly okay next question is saying the storage media can be it can be volatile as well as a non volatile let me tell you a simple thing we have ram and we have hard disk drive now this RAM is a volatile. Volatile means when you turn off the computer system, this entire memory is erased. But hard disk is non-volatile. That means uh, if, if you turn off, off the computer, this data is still stored there and it will not be erased. So generally, if you store the data, then we discuss about the non-volatile memory because the data is not erased, right? Storage media can be volatile as well as, well as non-volatile but again i think in this question they are asking about non-volatile storage media because ram it will be erased as soon as the computer is turned off okay now that depends on your perception so my perception is that i'm taking it as uh, non-volatile next is which of the following is a incorrect combination so this is a correct combination this is wrong this is correct and this is correct why this is wrong and actually this is also uh, this is also wrong this is also wrong so we have two data is uh, wrong because 1 kb 1 kb is equivalent to 2 raised to power 10 bytes which is actually 1024 bytes so that is why this is wrong and why this is wrong because it is 1 mb because they have written big b so it is 2 raised to power 20 bytes not bits so they have written bits so that's that is why this is also wrong and these two are correct now in question number 34 the word size of memory may be the word size can be equal to one byte it can be two byte it can be four byte see memory can be word addressable as well as it can also be byte addressable so there are two types of memory how we can address the memory so we can have a word addressable memory or we can have a byte addressable memory now size of byte is always fixed it is one byte is equal to eight bits but the size of word is not fixed one word can be equal to 8 bit one word can be equal to 16 bit one word can be equal to 32 bit one word can be equal to 64 bit that depends on your system or you can see the configuration of the system so the size of the word is not fixed so it is all of the above now for question number 35 they're saying computer system can have a primary memory yes it can have a secondary memory yes it can have a cache memory therefore answer is option number d primary memory means it is the main memory or you can say uh, it is the ram second memory means it is hard disk drive right and cache memory you already know 
Now let us look at the next set of questions. Question number 36 says the resistor in CPU is defined as generally resistors are the combination of flip flops. Flip flops. So it is not group of bits, it is not a group of bytes, it is a group of flip flop, it is not a group of words. So resistors are group of flip flops. Now question number 37 says the random access memory RAM has read control, write control, read and write control and all of the above. So obviously the answer should be all of the above but I am saying option number C because read and write it, it is including both of them but I think the question is not well formulated. So this question needs to be more well formulated here. Now question number 38 says which memory is electrically erasable. So here out of all these memory we already know that EE PROM is the electrically erasable memory. Now for question number 39, the cache memory is, so they are saying how the cache memory is, cache memory is very fast and it is a very very small memory, right. So for the question number 39, as you can see here, uh, it is also a static memory, it is fast and it is very very small because obviously both these question options are correct. So there is a high probability that all of the above is the correct answer for this given question. Even though I, I have no idea whether it is static memory or not, but I will say because option number A and B are correct, so option number D should be an answer for this question. Now for the question number 40, the cache memory in computer organization is placed on main memory in CPU between CPU and main memory associated with hard disk. So generally it is between CPU and the main memory. So answer to this question is option number C. Generally you can see the structure, we have a CPU here, then after CPU we have something, some registers, then we have cache memory, then we have main memory, then we have secondary memories. So you can see sometimes this registers and CPU both are combined to make one single unit they are not considered as two different units so you can see between CPU and main memory we have a cache memory as the memory unit so answer to this question is option number C. Now let us look at more question question number 40 to question number 50. 